I'm Tracy Baxter with today's Record News Watch. Army Sergeant Sean Farrell II came home today. The 24-year-old Accord resident died April 28th when enemy forces attacked his unit in Afghanistan. This morning, Sergeant Farrell's body arrived at Stewart Airport. Then a motorcade procession brought him back to his hometown. People lined the streets outside Stewart Airport to pay their respects to a fallen local soldier and his family early this morning. This group of supporters were among the first to arrive. My husband is a retired active military, Army type. I have three sons that are also Army. I had a daughter-in-law that is now out of the Army and a daughter that's active duty Coast Guard. So things like this are near and dear to my soul and my heart. And when I heard about it, I decided to come out and give support to his family as well as the military. It's the ultimate sacrifice and it's the ultimate job that anyone can do for their country, for their family, for their neighbors, for their friends. And it's just so important to show support to make sure that they know that d despite everything that's going on, they're still in our hearts. The funeral procession included motorcyclists with the Patriot Guard Riders and other organizations, along with representatives from the military, police, and local fire and ambulance units. And a number of local veterans could be seen paying their respects along the route. Certainly understand uh, the tremendous loss that this family must be feeling, but the pride that we have in these young men and women who are going off to defend our flag and to keep the principles that we hold so dear uh, so that they can be there for future generations. So we, uh, we as Vietnam veterans, I understand what it means for someone to say welcome home. I'm sorry that this fellow couldn't come home to hear that himself, but we're here to welcome him home for his final rest. It's a terrible shame. I think it's our duty as citizens to uh, give them a prop send off. Megan Scarl's family is a good friends with Sergeant Farrell's father. She was blown away by the sight of people pulled over alongside the road. And it's amazing. It really shows what the community, you know, their love and respect for, for Sean and his family and for the duty that he served. And to get text messages, to hear that people are lining the streets from Kerhonkson to Kingston. And it's just an amazing thing to hear. And I've been here for about an hour now. And the amount of people that have poured out here in Newburgh is simply amazing. Tomorrow, friends and the general public are invited to pay their respects at skate time in Accord from 10 a.m. to noon. A funeral service for Sergeant Sean Farrell will uh, follow, concluding with burial at Crumville Cemetery. In other news, more fireworks in Monticello last night, where the village board voted unanimously to abolish the village's police commission. The move came in the wake of village elections that re removed supporters of Mayor Gordon Jenkins, who had pushed for its creation and was in response to a PBA lawsuit filed in an attempt to get the commission disbanded. Prior to the vote, there was this testy exchange between PBA President John Riggler and the mayor. I've never seen the position. No, the no. Best thing for you to, <clears throat> excuse me, the best thing for you to do, yourself. resign and go on with your life. You're mad you, because you, you need, need to resign. Get out of that back room. Get out of that back room. You've been waiting for your first five minutes. You've been waiting for your first five and then I ask you to get out the back and patrol, and you don't even want to patrol. Because right. you want to sit in the back playing with computers. Sullivan County District Attorney Jim Farrell made his voice heard. Speaking directly to the mayor, he said the commission had compromised the ability of Monticello police officers to do their job, referring to the creation of the commission as a naked power grab. Nothing more than a naked power grab with its intent to wrest control of this police department from the police professionals that are hired to run it. I would point to the ex-chief of police here in Monticello, Doug Solomon, who left shortly after the police commission was formed. Meeting included plenty of back and forth shouting. At one point, Monticello PBA President John Riggler suggested that Jenkins resign. The police commission now, as Carmen just said, can, consists of a convicted felon and you on probation. It doesn't make sense for this to be happening anymore. Human Rights Commission makes more sense. I hope the board, in its wisdom, will do away with this travesty. We will drop our lawsuit. A judge has already said we're in the right and we can move forward. And we can stop all this. We can stop the bleeding and the spending and we can move forward. Jenkins continued to defend the creation of the commission, saying it was formed to respond to civilian complaints about police conduct. And he accused Farrell of having racial motivations. But there's very few people in this community that's going to sit here and say we need a commission. 
Very few, especially when it comes to minorities, because they're afraid that they're going to be attacked by do, by getting or involved arrested. with something. So they put their hands up and says, I'm not getting in trouble. I'm not talking to G Jim Farrell. Jim Farrell wants to put your ass in jail. So how do you think they feel, Jim? Several of those opposed to the police commission did say they would favor re reactivating Monticello's Human Rights Commission that uh, could hear complaints about police and other Monticello Village employees. State Agriculture Commissioner Richard Ball is warning consumers in Orange County and vicinity not to consume unpasteurized raw farm milk from the Stamp Farm in Pinebush due to possible listeria contamination. Samples of the milk taken in the past couple of weeks tested positive for listeria monocytogenes, an organism that uh, can cause serious and sometimes fatal infections in young children, frail or elderly people, and others with weakened immune systems. Ball says it's important to note that raw milk does not provide the protection of pasteurization, which eliminates all pathogenic bacteria like listeria. To date, no illnesses have been reported. New Windsor residents had plenty of questions to throw at the CEO of a company that would like to build a casino in their town. A public forum on the Green Track Casino proposal last night attracted uh, more than 100 people who wanted to know not just about the potential economic benefits, but the possible environmental and traffic problems that uh, could arise from a project that, if selected, would result in a casino resort to be located on 140 acres at Stewart Airport at the intersection of Bruning Road and International Boulevard. Green Track officials said the proximity to the throughway in I-84 would uh, make for an ideal location. Others questioned whether a proper environmental review can be completed in a short period of time. An application for the project must be submitted to the state by June 30th. We enjoyed sunny weather today, uh, but uh, that will not be the case tomorrow. Clouds move in tonight, and the forecast for Thursday includes clouds and periods of rain with the highs up around 65 degrees. Friday will be mostly cloudy and a bit milder with temperatures at or near 70. Well, stay on top of what's happening by starting your day with the Times-Herald Record. And breaking news is just a click away right here at Record Online. For Record News Watch, I'm Tracy Baxter.